A reading from the Gospel of John. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now, standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. The word of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is not called by name anywhere in the Gospel of John. She is simply the mother of Jesus. She appears twice, once at the beginning of his ministry, at the wedding in Cana of Galilee, and again at the end where we will see her at the foot of the cross on Good Friday. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is not called by name here, but she has an important role in this gospel. At the beginning of Jesus's ministry and at the end. In both places, Jesus's mother plays a supporting role. In both places, she is in the midst of a drama that highlights the importance of relationships and of family. At the foot of the cross, we will see on Good Friday that Jesus will create a new family. He will bind his mother and the beloved disciple together as mother and son. And today, in the story we hear today in Cana at the wedding, Jesus's mother is the one person who knows what Jesus is capable of. She sees what is missing and she encourages him to save the party, so to speak. They are guests at a wedding, which is a multi-day affair in those times. And food and wine are necessary for everything to run smoothly. Food and wine are central to the celebration. And somehow this family has run out of wine. It is unthinkable. It's simply not done. For the rest of their lives, everyone would remember this bride and groom as the couple 
who ran out of wine. Every time there was another wedding in the community, somebody would say, remember the time that Isaac and Rose got married and they ran out of wine? Isn't it both strange and wonderful that Jesus's first sign and miracle in the Gospel of John is not a huge healing, but a provisioning. He provides what is missing, what is needed for this celebration to continue. And in fact, Jesus provides more wine than most gatherings possibly could consume. This is an abundance, a gift, a pouring out, flowing over, a river of wine held in six large stone water jars of 20 to 30 gallons each. Perhaps this sign, this miracle at the beginning of the Gospel of John shows us that miracles don't have to be earth shaking. Sometimes it is enough to see what is needed and provide it in the moment. Sometimes providing the container for joy is a miracle in itself. The Gospel of John, which we will get passages from here and there over this liturgical year, mostly we're getting Luke, the Gospel of John is very different from the other, from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, known as the synoptic Gospels. They are more telling the story of Jesus sort of in a, in a flow forward in time. And the Gospel of John is written differently. It is full of symbolism, deeply symbolic. Everything in the Gospel means more than it says. Did you hear at the beginning of this reading, on the third day, the resonance of that with the resurrection, on the third day, or even creation, on the third day, God created. So this gospel can always be read on at least two levels, the material level and the symbolic level. Well, here on the material level, Jesus saved the party. He saved this family from the shame and notoriety of not being able to provide what was needed and expected by everyone. On the symbolic level, this is a wedding, a wedding feast, a wedding banquet. And these images are all over the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the reading from Isaiah today, we heard the promises of God to the Jewish people with the symbolism of marriage. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called, my delight is in her and your land married. For the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The image of a wedding between God and the people, between God and Jerusalem. God is promising the Jewish people this bond, this relationship. And in the Christian tradition, the mystical marriage of Christ and the church is deep in our tradition. Christ as the bridegroom and the church as the bride. God is always inviting us to deeper relationship. 
and the marriage image of marriage is a powerful image of a strong bond and relationship. And God is always inviting us to the feast. We heard today in the psalm, they feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. And Jesus created drink, a river of drink at the wedding in Cana. Or you might remember this passage from Isaiah that we often hear at funerals. Again, the feast and the wine. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. That's Isaiah 25. So perhaps this story is at the beginning of the Gospel of John for many reasons. And perhaps one of them is to show us that miracles don't have to be earth-shaking. The disciples believed in Jesus from this sign. Sometimes it is enough to see what is needed and provide it in the moment. Sometimes providing the container for joy to emerge is a miracle in itself. So in this time of uncertainty around us in the world, can we have eyes for these miracles that still happen? When have you been surprised by joy? When have you seen provisioning happen in a surprising way? Where has a need been seen and met beyond all expectations? I can think of one recent example in our own parish, which some of you know about. For many reasons this past year, 2021, our membership has gone down. People moving away, fallout from the pandemic, fewer pledges. And we started 2021 with about a $24,000 deficit budget, bare bones budget without money for a musician. As the year went on with careful management of funds, we thought that perhaps this deficit might be cut in half. We didn't have quite as many expenses as we thought we'd have. So we might end the, the year maybe with $12,000 deficit. And then at the end of the year, Pastor Kathleen, your former rector, saw a need and met it beyond all expectations. She sent a check to the parish, a gift that enabled us to end the year with a balanced budget. And this check was sent in honor of John Bacher and Mary Lee Fricker, our dear members who had died at the beginning of Advent and the end of 2021. Kathleen knew that both of them would be smiling in heaven, knowing that it would make their hearts glad and our hearts glad that we could end the year in the black. Miracles don't have to be earth shaking. Sometimes it is enough to see what is needed and provide it in the moment. Sometimes providing the container for joy to emerge is a miracle in itself. Amen.